Catus Maximus here. This time with a quick review as well as a demonstration of the Denon SC7000Z desoldering tool. This is a pretty nice desoldering tool. Um, all integrated into one handheld unit. I was just going to show a quick overview of general tools that you would find for desoldering. One of which is of course Desoldering wick, which is really great if you have some pretty heavy solder to deal with. If you need to sop up a bunch of thick solder like this, this is really uh, a good option for that. Um, it can be frustrating to use. One thing about desoldering is if you only get some of the solder out, the circuit will still be stuck. Yet, there won't be enough solder in there to transfer enough heat for you to remelt it and you end up just burning components. So sometimes you have to be aware that if it de doesn't desolder real nice the first time, you may have to actually add solder to get enough uh, metal in there to transfer the heat so that you can actually desolder. So this is a common type, probably one of the cheapest type of desoldering tools. It's just a soldering iron. It's a little low power, 25 watt. They have an issue because you have this big tip sucks away a lot of heat. I recommend pulling the tip out of these 25 watt units and putting them in like a Weller 40 watt, then they work a lot better. And it just has a, a bubble and you just simply hold it and when the solder is hot, you release it and it sucks some up into here and into this tube. And they're kind of a hassle. They do work more or less in a pinch, but not really. The other style that we have is the same thing it's also an iron this is a paladin 30 watt it works a little better uh the nice thing about this one is it has a spring-loaded plunger so when you heat it up it has a hollow tube through it you put it on the circuit and then it will suck it out and that sudden rush of air actually works quite a bit better this thing more or less is successful uh, a nice thing is that you can just pop this out and totally disassemble and rebuild this. The solder just builds up in the uh, capsule there. It uses an O-ring on the plunger, which is super easy to replace when that wears out. And uh, it's really easy to take apart because you just pop this in and out. And then this whole cartridge just comes apart. There's the two power wires running down to the back. And then to put it in, you just take and snap it in and adjust that. And so these are pretty good. Um, and sometimes it doesn't get all the solder out in one shot, so you have to uh, put a little bit of solder back in and try again. Um, anyway, these aren't bad if you see them. But all that's in relation to this Denon. We'll go ahead and uh, take a quick look. The Denon has these replaceable cartridges, which are real easy. You just pop this out, and it has this cartridge, which is a plastic thing with a, a diaph... Come on, if you can see... There we go. I don't know if you can really see inside there, kind of. It's a little plastic cartridge. There's a little flat diaphragm with some slots around it so the air can go past. So the solder will hit this plastic piece and kind of land in the middle, and any dribbles come through and get caught up in finer gases. Um, there we go, get caught up in this filter. Um, they're kind of hard to order. Uh, take a while to receive, and this tool is not super common. They're apparently more than $300. I found this used, so I feel pretty lucky. Um, so I've been reusing the same cartridge, just scraping out the solder. It seems to be just fine, and then using uh, Dremel buffing wheels as replacement filters. So the big handy thing is this is just uh, integrated with an electric pump. So this can continuously draw air and suck. The other really nice thing about the Denon is it's a thermal couple controlled, so it's a precision temperature controlled unit. Um, and you can set the temperature on the back. And then you just turn it on. Helps if it was plugged in. So the little red light turns on, letting you know it's heating up. And as soon as it's done heating, uh, it'll start blinking. It has a little provision for a lanyard tether. It has a high carbon content plastic, so the body is actually conductive for electronics. Um, it uses a 100 watt heater. Uh, I don't know if I just mentioned that. Um, so it has plenty of power. Um, that's one big advantage is that with a 100 watt heater, it's able to deliver as much energy as it needs to keep that tip up to temperature. And it has interchangeable tips with different size. Um, there we go. 
holes in them and I just have always been using this 1.5 millimeter tip uh, and they seem to actually last quite a while you'll notice with other soldering irons uh, the tips kind of erode pretty quick and that's whatever metal they make it out of is much better on this unit and it says that it's already blinking and up the temperature it's really that fast I call it the cow desolderer because of that vacuum pump. It does have an ability to actually blow hot air to try to work with surface components, but I haven't had as much success with it. And so it's pretty nice because you just get it on the circuit here. Melt that down. Oh, probably need a little more temperature. There we go. Let's let this finish heating up. We'll try on a different component here. Every once in a while, it's not super great, depending on just the, you know, if the solder has stuff on it, uh, you know, whatever rhyme or reason. Get it on there for a second, and just hold it, switch it around. It doesn't always get all the solder out. Hold it for a second. Most times it does a pretty good job. As you can see, there's just a tiny bit of solder and I was able to pop that out. So most times it makes it simply amazing to deal with electronics. Um, pulling off components, the 100 watt heater, like this heat sink, which is held down by a couple of posts that are soldered in. I don't know if this is actually big enough diameter to get around those posts. It is. And voila, there's our heat sink. You know, you, it takes quite a bit of heat to get those off. And so that's what makes this so nice. There's other vacuum solder workstations, professional models that are awesome. Companies like Hako and etc. Um, but they're big units that have, have a base unit. And then these long hoses and stuff to go to your soldering tool. The nice thing about this Denon is just all integrated. Um, you can just take it wherever you need to go and um, easily do this reworking. And if it it's super fast. I mean, I just don't know how it could get really any easier or more simple. Um, because especially on connections with lots of solder on them like these. It really works well. As you can see, the components will just fall out. Where are those two connections? And I kind of press hard. You can feel it squish down when the solder melts. And you just give it another second. Let's see. And not always is it perfect. Get a little heat in that hole. And so that's just how easy it is to use this Denon soldering tool. I mean, it's really pretty amazing. We'll do a couple more parts here. Let's see. Um, even on smaller stuff, so I, uh component like this like we have this little socket on here and if we want to get that off it's I don't know if that quite worked as well as I wanted it to Now those holes, when the holes are really tight, it can't get a lot of air past, and it has a little bit of trouble in that situation. Anyway, that was just a quick review. It does have a nice little conversion table um, on the side there uh, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, and figured I'd just put up a, you know, kind of a detailed review and test and demonstration. And these kind of vacuum soldering tools are about as good as you can get for desoldering. Uh, they really are. They make um, pulling off and putting on components much less daunting because you're not there with a the soldering iron trying to solder a wicket and all that. It's one-handed. You can hold on to the circuit with one hand trying to pull it out while desoldering with this. Add a little more solder and suck it back out. Um, even using this as the iron, which is really handy that way. So you even have to have a separate iron. And uh, the fact that there are only a couple YouTube videos and none of them were actually like a review or even talking about it. I've been inside and it is a ball bearing motor construction. It's surprising. And 
ball bearing pump and motor construction so it should last quite a long time and you can uh, they're still around so you still can get parts for it and uh, I guess that's about all there was uh, please subscribe uh, Caddis Maximus out